Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Today we have a really special presentation today, um, and that is a four OLED TV comparison. And uh, I'm not going to tell you which is which right away. I'm going to want you to guess that. I'm going to start it off with the 1,000 nits um, Spears and Munsell, uh, and then we're going to work our way up to the 2,000 nit one. But I just want to say what's up to everybody. Um, I know it's going to take a little bit for people to roll in, and you might actually not be even seeing this intro right away the way that streaming works sometimes. Uh, it just plays an ad before, and then like talks me talking in the middle of it. So um, yeah, but welcome to everybody, and I hope everybody's doing good. I'm gonna go through a lot of different content today. Uh, demos, I'm gonna do some still photos and some still shots of movies and things like that. We're also gonna go through gaming. Um, might even do some Nintendo Switch if we have time. Um, and um, you know, I'm taking requests too. So if you guys have any requests, the best way to leave a request is going to be the super chat. That's the requests I'll be taking. Um, but I'll also be taking questions, even if they're not super chats as well. Um, but if you have like a specific request, um, yeah, you're going to have to chat up, um, and let me know or else I probably won't see it. So, um, I'm running this stream solo today. I can't really see too many, um, questions, but I'll try my best to answer some. We're going to start it off by answering some questions and talking a little bit and letting you know exactly what's going on. So I, first and foremost, I just want to be um, straightforward with you guys and let you know exactly what's going on. Uh, we do have the G4 as one of these TVs. Most of the TVs here are going to be, you know, OLED TVs. That's all they are. So um, I don't know if you can guess which is which, but one of them is a Sony A80L. And full disclosure, I did end up um, getting this as a gift from Sony. So just want to be straightforward with you guys. So this was not purchased by me. It was sent to me by Sony. Um, and I ended up letting you guys know that earlier this year as well. So, but that is being used in the comparison, full disclosure. Uh, but also it won't, it won't end up being the best TV here. Uh, but it's just amongst them. It's just one of the choices that you can get right now. And we're going to talk about you know, the strengths and weaknesses of all the TVs. And maybe the best TV overall isn't the best TV for you necessarily. Maybe you can, you know, save a little bit and get one of the other ones. But one of them is a S95B. You can no longer get that. So um, that's just uh, something. Everything else you can buy right now. Uh, so every TV you can buy right now except for the S95B. Right now, this is a thousand nits content, so they should all look about the same, right? Um, and I'm going to take myself off the screen because that'll be distracting if I have myself up all, all stream. I just wanted to say what's up to you guys and um, let you guys know. And I'm going to be answering some questions in chat as well. Let me, uh, let me see, what, so, see what's going on in chat. Say what's up to everybody. So um, what's up to all the early birds? See you guys in chat. See Leo in chat. Got MM in chat, ASAF, Michael, the usuals. Awesome. What's up, guys? Stop the FOMO in chat as well. What's up? What's up? So there is a couple of questions that I kind of wanted to hit on real quick. Where is it? Oh, my gosh. There was one that I, I saw that I wanted to hit on. Yeah, so um, something about TV settings. Where is it at? We're going to go through the TV settings in a second. I can't find it. But um, someone was saying that I was like nerfing the TV settings. So I'm going to go through all the TV settings to let you know I don't do that. Why would I do that? So um, one of the reasons why people think that I change settings is because I want one TV to look better than the other. That doesn't make any sense. Like, I wish they all looked good. 
Like, my goal is to just find you guys the best TV. That's really it. So um, let's go through that. Um, so the Sony is set to custom. We'll go to picture settings, and we're going to reset all of them, okay? So um, as you can see me do it live now, I'm resetting all of the settings. Custom is where we're going to be at the Sony. Um, actually, I might have just gave it away. So before I reveal the settings, uh, any further, you all know where the Sony's at now. Let's go to the 2000 nit content because I, I think that's like the one that's uh, very uh, noticeable. So let's go to 2000 nits. And I'll, I'll go through chat too, don't worry. So yeah, I want your guesses though in chat right now. So if you guys are watching, this is the one you're going to want to guess on. This reveals all, I think. In my opinion, it does. I don't know. I'm looking at your guys' guesses right now. Let's see if anybody got it yet. Saw people guessing earlier. We've got Robert Zone in the chat. What's up? How you doing, Robert? Good to see you here. Got a super chat for him. Oh god, that's that's big. Sorry. That's huge. Let's let's make that smaller. Uh, we got a super chat from Nova. He says, uh, hot take, do you like the G4 more than the A95L? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, I can't really answer that right now. I do want to make sure I see the A95L next to the G4 again. So I'm going to try my best to get the A95L in again. Um, I don't know, though. I'm trying to find somewhere I can borrow it from. I don't want to buy it so you know if I could borrow one I'll see I, I I might be able to swing one locally but um it might be a tough task I I don't want to answer that though just because like I don't know I'll say this the g4 is a very impressive tv it exceeded my expectations and you, you guys know I like the g3 a lot there was only a couple of the downsides about it. This is better than the G3. Um, this is performing better than the G3 did against my S95B. So, you know, I really like what I saw out of my S95B when it came out. Uh, and even after the quote unquote nerf, as you can see, this is like the S95B in use here is going to be the one that is nerfed, so to speak. But yeah, the G4 is is pretty pretty awesome. Let's see, we got so people are guessing the G4 is the bottom left, and then somebody guessed G3 top right. I don't have the G3 in this comparison. the The top right is the A80L. I think I gave that away earlier. G4 is indeed the bottom left. I think it is noticeable. It's one of those things that just kind of leaps off the screen. Um, especially when you're when you're watching this 2000 nit version of the Spears of Munzel disc. Like, whoa. Uh, for fun, uh, I'll go to the, the 4000 nit one. Does anybody know where the S90D is? Anybody want to guess where the S90D is? 
as we watch some 4,000 net content and see how the TVs handle it. Let me change the exposure. So this is 4,000 nit content. Samsungs are struggling with it. I mean, that's a dead giveaway. Can you guess which one the S90D is now? Or not yet. Look at that. This one, look how the G4 sticks out on this one. That is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to pause it on this scene and let you guys guess which one is the S90D. Because nobody guessed it right yet, I don't think. Okay, wait, somebody did. Bottom right, S90D. Correct. Bottom right is S90D. Top left is S95B. So we've got the, the positions. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and make labels for them right now. I'm going to make labels. One second. Oh, actually, that's the, the right position. Here, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. I'm doing this live, so it's going to say G4 over here, but it's not yet. I'm doing this so that like when people come in the chat, they're not like, hey, which is which all day and, and you guys have to answer it. <laughs> it's convenient. You know, I'm actually like, really surprised at um, the A80L and how, how well it holds up like next to the S90D. And uh, I'm about to go through the settings for you guys so you don't think that like something fishy is going on. This is another crazy scene to me. Um, just love what the, the processing is doing with the, the G4. And I don't know what's correct, of course. You know, I don't have a reference monitor. We don't have a, a BVM sitting next to us. So I can't really tell you what's correct. But I can tell you right now, like, what's appealing to my eye the most. And by the way, these are all matched up in, like, the most accurate mode out of the box. So filmmaker mode and custom mode on the... Sony and we're going to go through other modes as well because I know everybody likes different tastes and we're going to go through that but I mean just I love what the G4 is doing here it is just creating so much depth like I don't like I said I don't know what's real like I don't know what's, what it's really supposed to look like but to me like I just see a lot more definition in the image from the G4 and I don't know what's going on with the processing, what it's doing, but it's creating depth. Like the tree is separating from the mountain there in the back. And it's just, it's given me depth. And I love that about the G3 or G4. I'm sorry. If I keep saying G3, slap me. Don't slap me. Uh, just tell me I'm making a mistake because it's just something I've been doing. It's a G4. Oh man, that's another good one too. I love the way the the lights are shining on the mountain there. Go back. Let me see if I can adjust the exposure to get this a little bit brighter. Without flipping. 
Is that better? I don't want to clip, so let me see what I can do. Oh, that's me. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's pretty bright. I mean, I, I think I don't want to go any brighter because I'll clip things. And if you see anything clip, I'll adjust the camera some more because I'm working with this software. I'm just trying to get you guys to be able to see it. Yeah, I just think there's such a huge difference. You have to have the right content on it though, because I'm going to show you some content that looks, everything looks really like pretty much the same. We're also going to do a different camera angle as well a uh, little later on in the stream so I can control the camera a little bit better. I've got it on auto right now, so it's just going to adjust the exposure automatically to show the most dynamic range possible. Wish the S95D was present. Yeah, I will have it present. Um, for some reason, they're like delaying my order. It said it was going to be here Monday. Now it's going to be here Friday. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that, but this is how it goes. I'm also working on getting the C4 in. So we will have a C4, S95D, G4, um, AADL or S95B, whichever TV you guys want me to put in that mix. or um, And then also I'm going to try to work on getting an A95L, but that might not be something I can do. I don't know. We'll see. I want to. Um, that clipped hard. Um, that was my camera. That was not the TVs. I have to adjust the camera. <laughs> but if you want to talk about a TV that like really exceeds my expectations, it's definitely the G4. I expected this to be pretty much a, a G3 reprint. I didn't expect game mode to even get fixed. So when Classy told me about that, when he saw it, I was kind of like shocked. <laughs> Um, and there's another one I'll pause on because it's like, whoa. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of mind blown to be honest with you. It's one of those things where it's just, they did it <laughs> like they did a good job. And you guys know how critical I am of LG. I'm very critical when it comes to LG. I just want them to do better. Um, and they, they've listened to everybody's criticism and they've made a really good TV, just a fantastic TV. <laughs> it jumps off the screen. Like it, it literally just jumps off the screen and it's like, yeah, I'm shocked. Again, I don't know what's correct. You know, for all I know, the G4 could be bamboozling all of us. And maybe it's not correct, you know? I don't know. We'll have to wait for Vincent's video for that one. But, like, it just looks amazing. Oh, yeah. You guys want me to go through the modes. Make sure I'm not nerfing anything, right? Okay. So, um, also, one thing we could do on this stream if you want to, if you want to, unless you don't care, we could update the S95B. Um, I do have it online. I've had it online forever. And it has not forced updates on me. Every time I update, I update by myself. Um, 1430. So this is what I'm on currently. For the S95B. It is going to be in DCI-P3. Uh, just because that is what it defaults to. It has to be. Otherwise, um, it starts to look really bad. Um, in the BT2020. Unless you are going to be able to set it up correctly. And I... I'm going to go ahead and reset the settings for you guys so you know that I'm not fooling around with anything. We're keeping it in Filmmaker here. 
Sony, we're going to go ahead and reset the settings on that. So you can see we are on custom. custom. We got the light sensor off, all that stuff. Oh yeah, you want me to look at the power saving for this one too? Yeah, I got nothing to hide, so I just want to want to be 100% transparent with the TV settings. So this is not this so one thing, the filmmaker mode is not the filmmaker mode out of the box. I did turn off dynamic tone mapping. I don't think dynamic tone mapping should be on in filmmaker mode. This is something that Classy said that they said is going to be turned off in filmmaker mode, but they just need to push an update to do it. So when I reset this mode, it will turn on dynamic tone mapping and things will look over brightened. That is not correct. So we are going to turn off the dynamic tone mapping. So um, let me go ahead and reset it. Okay, well, it says it's off when I reset it, but technically it was on when I first installed the TV. So I don't know, maybe there was an update. Um, so that, you know, that's that. All right, let's load that up again so that we can show you the settings and stuff. And I'm going to go through some other content too. It's not just going to be a Spears and Munzel marathon, even though I do like the horses in the snow. I know that everybody wants to see um, the TVs. So in different content, and we'll have a ton of different content. So I reset everything. You can see filmmaker mode, custom on the Sony. Again, nothing to hide here. Horses in the snow on 4,000 nits. Where do you see the most detail? Definitely the G4. What's the brightest? Definitely the G4. Where's the second most detail? The A80L. The S90D is completely done on this scene. It just stopped. Stopped. It, it can't handle the 4,000 nit snow. Um, the, the horses in the snow. Uh, and the S95B struggling with it a little bit as well. So let's go to 2000 nits again because like that obviously uh, handled it a little bit better. And the goal is not to make any TV look bad. I love all these TVs. I love the S95B. You guys know I love the S95B. I love the A80L. I think that the fact that it's holding its own against the S90D speaks volumes. So I'm pausing it on, on a couple of like scenes that really really show the brightness. Yeah, I don't know why people um, have the burning fear still. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm sorry, I just read a comment in chat saying about burning and I'm not I'm not thinking uh, burning is going to be an issue for many people. But yeah, here's a, so at 2000 nits, they all show the detail. So they all do a really good job tone mapping 2000 nits to show the detail for the horses in the snow. They all look really good. G4 does have like more brightness on the edges. That's one thing I've noticed about the G4 is it seems to have like a great full screen brightness. And I love the way this deer looks. Um, like this is where you can't see it on YouTube too good, probably. Uh, just make sure you change the stream to to 4K also. But like the processing again on the G4 is crazy good for depth. Like the that that effect it just creates it. Um, and I don't know how to really explain it, put it into words. It just does leap off the screen. Um, and I have like looking at it next to the S90D, I think the S90D looks flat in comparison to it and flat in terms of like depth, but it's not flat. 
Like if you see this TV on your own, you'll be like, oh, that's pretty good. I like the depth on the S90D, but you got the G4 next to it and it's just like, whoa. Um, there is that difference. So what, you know, LG did with their processing this year, it's phenomenal. It's crazy good. I love it. There's no other way to, way to put that. Just an outstanding job. You can even tell on YouTube. Yeah, you can. And that's, that's the crazy part. Like I showed, um, I was talking to IRL HDR on Twitter and um, I showed him a couple shots that just kind of blew my mind. And I was like, this, this is crazy. And then this is one of them where it's like, look at the full screen brightness here. Like that is, that is wild to me. So yeah, I just think they do such a good job with processing too. Just fine details in general. Like look at the rocks on the bottom there. And I think it makes a difference where they put the brightness too. It just feels like brightness is at every location on the screen where it needs to be. The right amount too. It's not like they're over brightening anything. And again, like maybe, maybe something is tricking me here. Maybe something isn't right. I don't know. I don't have a reference monitor. Um... But LG is typically not the company to do that. So I don't know. It's pretty wild. The motion is really good on this TV. Um, sorry, I left that comment up. So we got 210 people watching right now. The early birds, what's up? I hope you guys are enjoying the stream so far. You know, I will be answering questions and everything as the stream goes on. Let me scroll through chat as we watch this nice demo of Spears and Munzel. And then we'll switch out. Um, we'll do gaming last. And when I switch content, you will see this screen here pop up. You might have seen it last stream. You will see it again. It'll just be this screen right here. When you see this screen, it just means that I'm changing content. The stream's not over. I'm coming back. I'm just changing content. So if you see that screen, that's what that means. And we'll do that when we're scrolling through any kind of copyright content just to make sure we don't get hit. And, uh... I don't usually do this with Spears and Munsell discs, but we will go ahead and look at it with the dynamic tone mapping on. So I'll take a bright scene like this. It's a very bright scene, I think. Um, let's go ahead and put them in their dynamic tone mapping modes. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really do it with the S95B, so that one's gonna be excluded from the competition. Unfortunately. So we will go to movie mode. We'll make sure that active tone mapping is on. It is. Uh, the Sony is a little tougher to do it with too. But we will go to, we'll just change the HDR tone mapping to brightness preferred and see if that helps it. There's a thing is, is like, you can't really match the G4 with its like dynamic tone mapping brightness. It's just bright. It's crazy. So, and it is now on Cinema Home. But the fact that like the, the brightness didn't change that much just shows you like filmmaker mode is not this super dull mode out of nowhere, you know? Like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make your content dull. It's going to show you the content as it's as it's supposed to be. But this is just a bright scene. So dynamic tone mapping didn't really do anything to this scene. Again, I, I don't have anything. To, I can't do nothing for the S95B for dynamic tone mapping. They took it out of movie and, and uh, filmmaker mode. So you don't have any access to dynamic tone mapping for the S95B. You can kind of fake it with like contrast enhancer, but that's not dynamic tone mapping. 
So um, yeah, let's go ahead and play this with the dynamic tone mapping. Should we play it at 4,000 nits maybe? I don't know. Uh, I should just like write dynamic tone mapping on the screen right now so people that come in doesn't think that it's like filmmaker mode again I'll just put home cinema modes Everything's blown out right now. <laughs> it's unfortunate. All right, so let's switch to content then. Cinema Home's pretty good, yeah. If you just want like super brightness, you get it. <laughs> you, you got it. You got it, Cinema Home. All right, let's let's switch the content. So here's a here's a scene I recorded earlier. I'm just gonna leave that up while I switch the content. That's from Aquaman, and uh, that's a very bright scene from Aquaman. So you can kind of see the difference there in like actual movies. Be right back. All right, I'm going to put on uh, some YouTube demos. One second, bear with me. All right, so first demo I'm going to show you is going to be, let's go with something we kind of know already. We still have it on Cinema Home. Yeah, let's go with one of these LG demos here. Just realized that's still up. So the best thing to do, like, is to probably have the, the Sony in, like, uh, probably, let's see. So my cinema mode, I have um, advanced contrast enhancer on it. It kind of helps with it. I also have it on brightness preferred. So we can see. Maybe that helps. Maybe that helps. But Cinema Home's just like on a whole different brightness plane. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. And it's not like this isn't bad. Like, it's not like this is wildly bad with color. It's just super bright. It's just brighter than what like the content is intended to be. But for some people, they probably don't care about that. They just want like a super bright content. Colors look really good still. 
It's not like the colors are stretched. Like it's not vivid mode or anything like that. So yeah, let's go to the let's go to the LG demos. And we'll switch it back to filmmaker mode as well. People were asking to see this right away and I, I wanted to deliver. So make sure I deliver on that promise. Ah, flash banged you guys, I'm sorry. So that's, you know, unfortunately there's nothing like Cinema Home for those of you that like dynamic tone mapping. Like on any other TV, there's nothing like it. Surely the settings are wrong on the other TVs? Surely they're not. I just went through them. Um, but I'll go back to filmmaker mode. I'm going to go ahead and pause it on uh, one of these scenes here. Where's it at? Is it this one? This scene's pretty bright. It's right here. When they're diving out of the, the plane. Let's see if I can time it up better. right here yeah that is so bright um i'm gonna put them back into filmmaker mode now so remember i did go through the settings earlier i showed you so there's filmmaker mode again dynamic tone mapping not on see it's off um and this is what happens if i turn it on not much because it's already a really bright scene. So there's that. As you can see. There's professional mode too. There's that. And then uh, switch the other one to filmmaker mode, right? It's already on filmmaker mode. This one, let's put that on filmmaker mode. All that does is just turn off the, uh, turn this tone mapping back to static. And then this one. You know what could be happening though? I don't know if it is, but. This one looks like maybe a uh, dynamic tone mapping is on on it, which is weird. That shouldn't be the case. Let's try to reset it again. Maybe this is a bug. Doesn't seem to do anything. It was working just a second ago. So there's some bugs that need to be ironed out. I don't know if this is like on. Maybe that's why this one is like super bright in comparison to it. So let's try a different mode. Maybe filmmaker mode is bugged. Let's go to cinema. Let's turn off the dynamic tone mapping. Okay. I think it's just a really bright scene to be honest with you. And dynamic tone mapping in filmmaker mode is different it doesn't do much so i think it's just a really bright scene it's not actually bugged all right well you guys saw some of the settings so you know i'm not fooling around let me take this off the screen because we're now out of that we're in filmmaker mode and custom What's wrong with the S95B? I think it should be included. And in, if you got it, right, why not? People want to see, is, is, it, is there any difference? Is there an upgrade? Do we have an upgrade?
Yeah, it's only two years old. It's not like it's a it's not like it's a super outdated TV. It compares really well to the S90D. Like it's actually brighter than the S90D. Yeah, no, it's not a bug. It's just that dynamic tone mapping doesn't do much in filmmaker mode. I don't like the new YouTube thing where that pops up in the corner. That's annoying. That is super annoying. <laughs> Will you test game mode? I absolutely will. I will test game mode. This scene struggles for my camera. My, my camera struggles with this scene. So let's go to a different one. It's a bright one. Yeah, let me know. You guys got questions. Um, feel free to leave those questions. <laughs> you want me to hit the vivid mode button? <laughs> we'll we'll do that. We're gonna we're gonna wait on that a little bit. We gotta go through some demos on filmmaker mode first, and then. We'll get pretty crazy with the with the vivid mode. Try that. I know a lot of people want to see that. And we're also going to do like color brightness test. I have a couple of things that are highly graded with a lot of color brightness in it that I want to look at. And then I want to show you guys I have recorded um, already so we can scroll through that footage. S95B actually holds up well. It really does. Yep. And you know, it's crazy. It's not even updated. Well, it's not updated to the latest update. We could. We could update to the latest update. But it's not updated to the latest update. I thought that was kind of interesting here. Like, um, the S90D has a, an interesting look to it. I'm not sure why we're losing color on the S90D. Can't really see it on camera. Let me uh, change the exposure a little bit. You can't see it really on camera. It just feels like, uh, I don't know, that could just be the white balance. The S90D looks a little weird here. dark again Why is that so small? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. This doesn't affect picture quality, by the way, in OLEDs, but just so you know, the A80L on the top is a 65 inch and the S95B is also 65 inch. And then the ones on the bottom are 55 inch. Again, this has zero effect on picture quality with OLED TVs. It's just gonna change the way they look on camera. Like, bright, like, not brightness wise, but size wise. That's it. Same brightness. FOMO wants vivid. All right, I'll give you vivid. I'll give you vivid. All right, let's find a vivid demo. What's a good vivid demo? Hmm.
First, I want to show you the pure red demo. How about let's look at this pure red demo? Like with filmmaker mode, and then we'll run it back in vivid. I guess I should put on the screen filmmaker mode. How about just whenever there's nothing on the screen, that just means we're in filmmaker mode. I saw somebody type in chat, is it true that filmmaker mode makes everything lifeless? Is is everything lifeless in the film? No? Like, does this look lifeless to you? Does the G4 look lifeless to you? Does the Samsung look lifeless to you? No. Doesn't. Filmmaker mode just gives you what it's supposed to look like. That's it. There's nothing bad about filmmaker mode unless you make it look bad yourself. People do that. People have done that, I'm sure. But there's no reason to. Like, it just looks good. That's why filmmaker mode is there out of the box. It's the same thing as, like, your movie mode. It's just filmmaker mode turns off motion processing and things like that. But you still do get active processing. So if there's anything actively being processed, filmmaker mode doesn't turn that off. Otherwise, the G4 wouldn't look different depth-wise. It wouldn't have different fine detail differences. Like, there's definitely some active sharpening going on with the G4, and I don't... There's no other way to put it. It's just a clear TV. All right, so we watched that back. We'll put this one back in. Uh, we'll throw the TVs into vivid mode. All right, let's uh, first let's. Let's type it out there so people, when they see it, I don't get anybody screenshot and saying, oh man, these TVs look really bad. Because the cameras definitely don't pick up vivid mode very well. It's just vivid. <laughs> All right. Vivid. Dynamic. Dynamic on the S95B is very bright. Very bright. Dynamic. Don't forget about the Sony. Vivid. Okay. This is going to look... Interesting. Who does vivid mode the best? Um, depends on what you define as the best, I guess. Yikes. I'll tell you what, those, that S95B is making that red just jump off the screen. <laughs> All right, we'll go to another demo. Uh, let's go to one with like all different colors, not just red, right? Let's go to nature. Ugh. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the S95B is doing to that green, but I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, guys. That is ugly. Oh my god. There's no detail in that green. S95B erased every detail in green. That's a bright crab on the G4 there. Clouds on Spears and We already did Spears and Munzel. I just forgot to do vivid mode on it. I might go back to it before we end. But then I would have to change content again. Oh my god, that green. Look at this scene. What do you guys think of this? 
Would you watch TV like that? This is the, the G4 is definitely the brightness beast right now. I haven't seen a TV get this bright with OLEDs. I just I haven't. Cuz I've compared all my TVs that I've gotten in to the S95B and dynamic and vivid and all that stuff and compared it in different modes. G4 is the brightest by far. I gotta see the S95D though. I haven't seen it. Not writing it off. Not a big fan of the coating personally, but I know some of you guys do like the coating, so we will check that TV out and see if it delivers. Is the G4 really brighter than all the TVs or is the camera? What do you mean? The camera is adjusting the exposure, but the G4 is the brightest. Like, by a long shot. Especially in, in like these kind of modes. But it even sticks out in filmmaker mode. You guys saw that earlier. The A80L and the S90D have the most natural kind of looking vivid mode, I'd say. If you're going for a natural look with your vivid mode. Or dynamic, I should say. Same thing, right? Like when I say vivid, it's dynamic. We're going to check out the LG C4 um, probably next week, hopefully. S95D and the C4 are coming in pretty soon. That is the... G4 looks the most artificial. Yeah, in vivid mode, it just... It really does look kind of like you just got AI to create <laughs> uh, your picture settings for you. I mean, kind of doing that, I guess, in a way. It's using AI processing. I just personally can't watch vivid mode because you'd have to have a lot of adjustments on it. Otherwise, you're just going to see a bunch of artifacts, like from the sharpness. It's going to be way too sharpened, and you're going to see so many artifacts. It's also... Yeah, there's just a lot of artifacts in, in vivid mode. Yeah, G4 over sharpens a lot in vivid mode. They all do. But, yeah. No, they definitely do. MLA is pretty good. 2.0, MLA 2.0 is pretty good. It does way better with color than I first thought. I still can pull up scenes where it loses color against QD OLED, and I will. But, like, here, look at it. I mean, it's doing a really good job. I mean, look, we're judging vivid mode. We can't be judging vivid mode, but yeah. We want to see what the TVs are capable of at like their highest brightness, right? So we'll, we'll punish, punish the TV. Let's find a really bright demo. It's a really bright demo. That first one we looked at, right? That's pretty bright. Screen camera was like, whoa. Look how blue that sky is. That is not natural <laughs> at all. Oh, man. It's not real life. It looks like it's not real life. It's like a dream world. Appreciate you doing this. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to show all the modes possible. We're going to show game mode and stuff too. 
and we're gonna we're gonna still do filmmaker mode of course because that's the reason why i do filmmaker mode on my comparisons is because it's the best way to do your apples in apples comparisons like it's that's it like that's all it is i'm not saying you guys should watch it in filmmaker mode i'm just trying to show you the differences because when we put it in vivid mode they all have their different philosophies on how they want to handle vivid mode G4 just kind of takes the gloves off and gives you every processing feature that they have available and just like throws color to the moon. Yeah, it's some at times it can look pastel y. All right, I'm going to change the content. Let's go to some uh, other content here. One second. That needs to be above that. All right, let's see. What can we look for content-wise? Let me find that one scene again that we looked at the other day when we were doing just versus the S90D. Let's see if I can pull that up. Hmm. Where is it? I swear I just looked at it. Is this? No. Maybe. This. Ugh. One second. I'm not getting 4K out of this for some reason. This one's just not. Wants to bump me down. It's buffering. One second. Fallout's cool. I was watching Fallout last night. It doesn't really have like it's not a high grade. So it's not it's not gonna show the difference on these TVs very much, to be honest with you. I used Fallout actually in the thumbnail picture. Um and you could that was good for like skin tones and stuff. And I'll go through uh skin tones in a second. I don't know why this is just struggling right now. All right, here we go. So we're in Vivid still, but I'm going to pause it on this screen. So they're all looking pretty bright here. Um, G4 still stands out. But now I'm going to go and switch off Vivid. So, oh, sorry. We are on Vivid. Now I'm going to switch it off. So let's go to... Filmmaker mode. Let's make sure everything's off here. Let's go back to custom. Dynamic tone mapping off. Expression and hands are off. Go back to filmmaker mode. Back to filmmaker mode. All right. Let me turn off this vivid screen here. So that's that's just filmmaker mode right there. That's a pretty interesting scene, right? There's all there's another one in this demo as well. One 
one second. Let me get that back on there for you. Here we go. For whatever reason, this this uh the shots of this is always bright. So we're going to do some Xbox real quick. Some gaming. Let's do some gaming. Um, but first, before we do gaming, we could go through some footage that I took of Aquaman. Took it at a different camera angle. I don't know if you guys could see that, but hopefully. So yeah, that's that's a pretty bright scene. Kind of recorded this earlier. So you can see that. Seconds. I got some other footage as well. Um, and I'm going to check chat in a second, see if uh, I missed anything. All right. So here's a pretty good scene. This is also filmmaker mode. They all do a pretty good job of holding on to color. So it's not probably the highest graded content, but that's a pretty good one. Let's scroll through the rest here. See, if there's more. This is another scene. This is actually a scene where you can see um, the W OLEDs are actually kind of starting to show a little bit of white in the color, where the QD OLEDs are holding on to the color a little bit better. There's a couple examples of this I can find. There's another one. Kind of see it. It's uh, holding on to it a little bit better. Another one. So, like, when you find some like high brightness examples, you can sort of see some differences there. No, my camera's adjusting on that one. So uh, I gotta reset the Apple TV thing. So just look at this image for a second.
Yeah, I know. I realized I didn't have all the chat up or the, the naming up. Let me find some more. It's a really bright scene with like, um, somewhere around here, I think. Yeah, that, that scene is pretty bright. This is actually a really cool one. Um, I got to try to pull it up again on, on like the angle that we were just on because this you can actually see a difference like in the waterfall. The textures in the waterfall, the detail in the waterfall you can make out differences, which is kind of cool. Same thing with the rocks on the mount, the mountaintop, the, si the mountainside and all that. Pretty awesome. We're going to go back to, uh, let's see where we got. We'll play this demo. This is, this one uh, a lot of people like from, uh, from Jennifer. So we're back in filmmaker mode. Let me look through chat while we're looking through this demo. I believe Jennifer grades her content pretty high. So I always notice some differences with some of the brighter TVs on her content. That's why I like to use it because it lets me see what the TV's capable of without having to put it in like vivid mode stuff. We got a super chat from uh, Getty G Man. Thank you for the super chat. He says, How about burning concern on the G4? If you're concerned about burning on the G4, I wouldn't be because you do have a five year panel warranty with it. So, like, if anything goes wrong, you still have that in your back pocket, which is nice. But I don't have any concern on burning for, like, any panel, to be honest with you. Any modern panel, I don't have any concern over it. And if you do have concern, you have things like pixel shift in place. Uh, you, you can even do the logo brightness reduction. But, I mean, I don't have any of that stuff on, on any of my OLEDs. And I'm burning free for, like, the last couple of years. So I've been doing this uh, YouTube channel for three years and I've had um, a few OLEDs since then. But I've had an OLED in the past too. I like had a C7 that never got burned in. And I, I use my OLEDs like as monitors, things like that. So a lot, of, a lot of static elements. I'm not really worried about the G4 burning in. I'm not worried about any OLED burning in though, to be honest with you. I get people are concerned, but I think that is too big of a worry for the trade-off that you have. Like, you can't get the same amount of contrast brightness combination in a mini LED TV. You just can't. So, like, before when we were just talking about, uh, here we here's a W OLED with no brightness enhancements, just, like, straight up maximum, like, 600 nit W OLED. Okay, then mini LED does have a competition there. But when you get brightness levels like the G4, for example, and the, the S95D and the S95C last year, I mean, heck, even the S95B and the S90D, like when you get to those brightness levels, when you go QD OLED or W OLED with MLA enhancement, it's there's really not a competition anymore for mini LED. Uh, and hopefully Sony changes that. Like, you know, I like the Sony prototype. I like what I saw out of it. I really did. So we'll see. You know, if it can get to that 4,000 nit claim and well, I mean, they didn't claim it, but it's, you know, rumored to be 4,000 nits or whatever. 
if they can get to that, that'd be cool. That'd be really nice. I don't have them right now. That's why I'm not using them. I'm just using what I have and I want to show people the difference. I figured, why not? Why not show people the difference? See what you can get from an AADL right now, G4 right now. AADL's on sale. You can even get an A75L. It's like the AADL. You know? So I'm just showing people the difference and how content matters. The content you put on the TV matters. Because I'm going to show you some content also where they look pretty much the same. They're like, they're pretty similar. Yep, exactly, Michael. I don't have it on hand right now. And I'm not saying these TVs are going to compete with the G4. That's not even why they're here. It's just... Just trying to show you a difference. The point of comparisons for me is just to show you the difference. That's it. I'm not trying to make one TV look better than the other. I just want to show you the difference. I mean, those of you that can still get an S89C, I highly recommend that. For 77 inches for $17.99. Here's a pretty good scene. Let me pause on this one. Dang it. Let's go back. <laughs> so if you look inside of the fire, um, you can see how they're starting to turn. Well, they look white on camera for all. <laughs> so let me adjust the exposure. Hold on. All right, so on camera with the exposure that I had it at, now you can see how the color is being retained on the QD OLEDs, right? So at the center of the flames, or sorry, at the center of the lava, the magma that's erupting out the volcano, you can see it's turning white. It's white, right? It's not, it's not like super white. It's not like white, the color white. It's just a lighter orange whereas like the s95b and the s90d are holding on to the color better so that's kind of the difference with that i'll stay at i'll stay at this dark exposure so you can kind of see the color differences Jennifer Gala makes great content, by the way. Like She just does a very good job of grading her content and editing it. Got a super chat from Cypher. Thank you, Cypher. He says, or she says, he or, C he or she says, I don't know, a uh, beautiful comparison on a different array of settings. Thank you for all the work that you do for us. Appreciate it. Like, um, yeah, I just want to supply all the different modes that are available and show you what it would look like. That's the goal. Thank you for that super chat. I really do appreciate it. So here's a scene though, like if you put this on pretty much any mini LED TV, I don't care how good your mini LED TV is, you're gonna see blooming on this scene. You're gonna see blooming. So you do have like that downside with mini LED all the time. I always get asked this question like, what is what is mini LED for you these days? And that's kind of it. It's just size. Like you can get a bigger size for a lot cheaper. I like mini LED at the budget range, like U7, U7K, U7N. 
Like I like mini LED in that price bracket a lot. In the mid-range where you can get OLEDs, especially the OLEDs that get brighter, that's where mini LED is a hard sell for me. Um, especially after seeing what I saw this year with a lot of the mini LED TVs. I think they're good. They have high brightness claims, but there's content that don't back that up. Like you don't see the brightness in that content at all. So that's kind of a bummer. And I, I got a lot of people also saying like, hey, KG, you were a mini LED guy. What happened? I wasn't a mini LED guy. I was a TV guy. I just like TVs. I'm not an OLED guy. I'm not a mini LED t TV guy. I'm just a TV guy. I like TVs. Like, come out with a TV technology that's better than mini LED, better than OLED without enhancements. I'm not like that. You know, I just like the TVs that look the best. That's it. That's all there is to it. There's no sides to it. It's not like a fanboy war or anything like that. Same thing with the brands. Like, I don't care if LG is better than Samsung or if Samsung's better than LG. I don't care. Like, I really don't. I know some people do. But I don't get tied up in that. Yeah, if you want to test this on your mini LED TV, like uh, it's called Four Elements of Life. It's by Jennifer Gala. And there's a scene in the middle, that fire scene, fire dancers. It's um, actually time stamped on the video. I love how bright white the uh, AADL looks at on a lot of these scenes. The white point on the AADL just makes it look like brighter in some scenes still like it holds up really well we're talking about a w oled with no enhancements are you guys actually surprised at how good the aadl is doing because i was because i put the c3 next to the s90c last year and it blew it away that's going to change this year with the c4 I'm hearing great things about the C4, which is surprising because I didn't expect much to change on the C4, but we'll get that in there and we'll see. Some SDR demos? I don't have SDR set up really well. I mean, we can put them on, but I haven't even adjusted the SDR correctly. I'm not great at showing SDR demos because I don't know what brightness to put them at. Like, I can go full screen SDR if you want. Like, we can do that. But, like, proper SDR showing you that, like, comparison, that's not me. But I can show you SDR um, at full screen brightness because I don't know where to set these TVs for SDR otherwise. But I could do that, you know, that we could do that. We'll, we'll do some SDR gaming in a little bit for sure. I'm shocked by the AADL as well. Yeah, I just said that, but <laughs> I am. Look at this scene. It's, it's these high brightness scenes. Like these scenes just leap off like, oh my gosh, they were looking the same brightness a second ago. And then G4 is just like, hey, don't forget about me. And this is the brightness. That, this is why I buy a TV right here. Like this, I would buy the G4 right now if I needed a TV. Like if, if I'm, if I'm a consumer and I needed a TV, the G4 would be purchased. Um, that would, that's, that's how it is. And I can't wait to see the S95D because I need to see it. I need to see it next to this. I've seen it. 
You know, I give you my thoughts and opinions on the S95D already. It is bright. So I got to see it next to the G4 and, and scenes like this specifically. I want to see, does it leap off the screen the same way? Or is that screen coding going to like hurt the brightness a little bit? Because you still are pushing brightness through a screen coding. Which I wonder if that's why they put it on the more, the brighter TV in general. Because like if they put the screen coding on the S90D, think about how dim that might look. <laughs> KG, if you want to swipe my credit card right now, hey man, I'm not trying to make you buy the TV, but if you want to, uh, be my guest. And if you do, I do have affiliate links uh, in the description. Shameless plug: If you are buying a TV, you can help out the channel by buying your next TV on one of those links. It is greatly appreciated. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not here to sell you a TV. But if you want to buy it, go for it. I do think like. As an S95B owner, if this was my TV, I'd probably hold on to the S95B for a while. But if you show me scenes like this, you might make me double think things because <laughs> it's this like huge brightness difference. I don't know. It doesn't maybe look like that on camera as much, but in person, it it's pretty big. It's that full, there's like this full screen brightness to the G4 that that kind of makes me just say whoa kind of cool dare I say I'm getting like really strong vibes from the G4 of just like they are doing much more than the creator intended to some of this image and like I wouldn't even be su surprised if Vincent came out with a video talking about the G4 is bamboozling us and we are having like some extra processing going on that's not supposed to be there because dang that is tack sharp like that is tack sharp right there look at the bottom right of the screen i'm specifically looking at the s95b above it and then the g4 below it and i gotta probably put the brightness up a little bit so you can see on the camera Camera is starting to overheat. That's not good. That's not good. I need to get a fan on it or something. Ah oh, man, what do we do? I guess I'll have to go to face cam or something if if the it overheats. That's not good. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's something about the, the G4. Maybe it is a little artificial. Maybe we got some AI working. But I like it. I don't care. Like, I don't care if I don't care if this is not what the creator intended. It's in filmmaker mode, so it's supposed to be what the creator intended. Dynamic tone mapping is off. But I am getting like the same kind of definition as the Sony, really. Like the Sony's giving me the same type of vibe, just not as bright. So the brightness adds to the depth, obviously. Like this. This scene right here. I'm going to pause it on this scene too. Look at that. It's crazy. <laughs> I get excited about TVs. If you're like, oh, he's just gushing over another TV. I just love TVs, guys. Like, when I do comparisons, it's fun to watch. I, like, I do this on my spare time. I was doing this last night. I was like, I can't believe this. I was texting all my buddies and I was um, texting uh, IRL or High Def News on Twitter, I was texting them. I was like, look at this scene. Look at this scene. I can't believe this scene. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely good. You know, I thought it was good at CES too, but I was like, I, got it. I can't see it next to anything, but it's just blowing my mind. But now that I see it next to things, wow. Yeah. This is it. LG did it. <laughs> I need to see an A95L next to this, and I need to see the S95D next to this.
But to be fair, I did put the S95C next to the S95B last year. I did not get results like this. I did put the A95L next to the S95B. Didn't get results like this. There was not the same brightness level. Like S95B is a pretty bright TV. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it's pretty bright. It's not like second generation, third generation bright, but it's still pretty bright. They're going to lose it. I don't care. I think like a lot of AVS doesn't like me anyway. So who cares? Let them lose it. I mean, you can't look at this TV next to another TV and not be like, wow, that's pretty nice. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something weird going on behind the scenes that's separating this. I'm a sucker for brightness, I am. And so when you can show me brightness in full screen like this, I'm amazed. And remember, don't forget I hate LG, so right? Apparently. That's what the that's what that's what AVS says I hate LG. So <laughs> um a lot of people in the comments always say I hate LG. I got invited to Samsung's facilities to check out their TVs. Remember that. Very nice. I don't know that the processing is like better than XR Clear, but it, it's doing better than XR Clear is on this image. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me lower the exposure a little bit. I don't know. Look at the sky. Do you see the way that like the gradient handling is on that? I'd probably I'd probably want to use <clears throat> ah I'd probably want to use smooth gradation on this um for the AADO. So bright. My room is so hot right now. My camera's melting. I'm melting. All this heat from the TV is just crazy. It doesn't help that I have an Xbox on right now, too. Oh, yeah. AVS doesn't like any YouTubers. Is this still Jennifer? Yeah. I hate that word, by the way, YouTubers. I'm not a fan of that word. I'm not a fan of that word. <laughs> Yeah, check out Jennifer Gala. She she makes just amazing content. Where's the one I was watching earlier? Oh yeah, this one's pretty crazy. If you guys have um All right, this is just a warning. Warning. Uh if you guys have any uh maybe I shouldn't show this. I don't want to induce any epilepsy. So let me not show that demo. Alright, there's a lot of flashing in that demo. I don't wanna I don't wanna risk it. I don't wanna risk it. Oh yeah, the G G four has a heat sink. 
the TV itself is not like hot. It's just it gives off a lot of heat. Pushes out a lot of heat. <laughs> All of the TVs do that. Especially when you have four on at their high brightness. Um, it's not great. No S95D right now. We'll have it next week. Jennifer's Samurai Demo. Which one is that? Do you remember which one that is? I don't know the name of it. James Bray, if you could give me the name of that, it would be awesome. Uh, let me try, I could try to read this. Uh, it's kind of small. Could you sometime, could you explain why you sometimes turn off dynamic tone mapping and sometimes turn it on? Is dynamic tone mapping supposed to be a good thing? It's kind of confusing. I know selecting HGIG with gaming is good, but with movies. So what dynamic tone mapping is doing is over brightening the whole entire image. So it's not actually going to be accurate anymore. It's not as the creator intended anymore. So people don't use it to compare because they they all have their own different ways of handling the dynamic tone mapping. Like, for example, the active tone mapping for the Samsung, it doesn't do as much uh, over brightening and lifting as the LG G4 does, for example, with dynamic tone mapping on. So I turn it off on my comparisons. And even when I watch TV and movies, uh, if I'm watching something that's kind of like I just want to be in that zone of like where that creator was then I'll turn it off. You can turn it on if, if you feel like something is a little bit dim or dull, you maybe you just don't like the grade of the film, then you can turn it on and over brighten things a little bit. So even on the Samsung, it over brightens still, just not to the same degree as like LG, for example. So people turn it off to, to keep it like accurate. Otherwise, it's not accurate. So um, the TVs itself, they do tone mapping, but they're static tone mapping. All the TVs just have their own tone mapping algorithm that they follow depending on how they, their TV is set to handle certain graded content. Hopefully that explains it a little bit better. I know it can be really confusing, like all these uh, terms that are out there. It's called Samurai. All right, let's find it. Samurai. There it is. That one? Is this bloody? I don't want to be like showing gore and stuff. Get kicked off of YouTube. I don't know if I would or not. This is nice. The the G4 handles color pretty good here. Actually, the AADL holds on to it nicely here too. So I wonder, in the waves, you start to lose it in the in the water in the back. Got 138 people watching. I really appreciate you guys for watching so far. We're going to go through some gaming content in just a second uh, before my camera dies. I don't want that to happen. I want to get some gaming in before that happens. Um, so we'll make sure we do that. And um, uh, yeah, if you're enjoying the stream so far, make sure you do hit the like button. Uh, I really do appreciate that. It'll help spread this stream out to more people so they can watch it after the stream is finished. Uh, thank you guys so much for that. This one's interesting. Like, I'm actually losing details in the clouds here. On, uh, not on the... Not on the G4. Why can't I stop it? Stop it. There we go. Yeah, I'm actually losing some details in the clouds here on the Sony. Kind of odd.
So the tone mapping is uh, not doing so great here. Got some detail loss in the S95B as well as the S90D. Not, not too bad though. Yeah, somebody requested I go through some Elden Ring, so we will definitely do that. See if there's any uh, differences there. I do know, like, how the game mode is on the S90D. I'll show you kind of the downsides with that for a game like Elden Ring. Because it is pretty noticeable. And if you guys are enjoying this content too, like... If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you do subscribe. Help me grow my channel. And I'm going to be doing more side-by-side -side comparisons all year long, of course. S95D will be in that, as well as the C4. I also have a Hisense U7 in coming. I'm going to go ahead and put it into the subscriber only mode to chat uh, and then take your questions in a second and then we're going to get to gaming. Well, I'll take questions while we're gaming, of course. So what I meant to say is we start to wrap this up a little bit more. But we definitely got to get into gaming. I'll do Nintendo Switch if you guys want to see it. If there's enough people that want to see it, I'll do it. If not, I'll have to save it. This is an awesome demo. I actually never watched this demo. Good job, Jennifer. This is, this is sick. It says chat is now open to everybody. It's weird. It's not, but... I just closed it. So... All right, yeah, so if you have a questions, leave your questions right now. Put a question mark in the beginning of it if you really want me to see it. If not, I'll try to see it anyway. But uh, that helps me see it. Uh, you can also leave a super chat if you do want to support the channel. That's nice. Um, but it's not required, of course. Yeah, the, the Sony does hard clip anything above their brightness limit. I noticed that. So this is the same scene I showed earlier, just it looks different this time, um, so maybe not as bright and it's not clipping as hard. I'm actually really surprised with the AADL, I thought it did really good. Heck yeah, Nintendo Switch. Alright, well, we'll do some Nintendo Switch for sure. Yeah, this, this demo is sweet. Again, like a scene like this on the G4, there's definitely, you can see the depth. The tree does look like it's closest to me, which is kind of wild that you can actually see that in TVs. Uh, same thing with the AADL though, like I actually feel like the tree is closest to me. It's a little flatter on the S95B. The s 90 d is doing an okay job with the depth as well here. But uh, it's it's more so the brightness in the right spots, though, that really sets apart the G4, I would say. It's very bright. But in a lot of scenes, they do look very similar. S95B is a monster. It is. It's an awesome TV. I can update it live if you want. I mean, I haven't updated still on 1430, but I heard nothing but great things about the newest update. I heard they changed the UI. I heard they made it faster. I heard it's even more accurate now. I heard it's actually just a good, 
good picture settings for like the default out of the box modes when you update it. So that's good. But if you guys have one of those rare S95Bs that never been touched, where you do have like a dynamic tone mapping movie mode, it's hard to say update on that one because I, I just like the way that looked. It jumped off the screen. It's not the same. It's not totally the same as like active, uh, but it's close. Here's an interesting scene. S95B does a little bit of smudging. Um, that's one of the complaints Classy had about it. And like I kind of pointed that out as well. It's like they tend to uh, smooth things out a little bit on some fine, like where you should see some fine details it tends to be a little smooth, like on the edges here. The G4 is a little bit more smoother. Um, sorry, it's a little bit more crisp on the edges where the S95B is just, like smooth across. The Sony, you can see really good fine details. There is a little bit of clipping the because the hard clip, but other than that, we're good. Looks good. Depth is good on all of them. S90D looks really great on this one. I actually love the way the S90D looks on this scene. When 3,000 to 5,000 nits content will be mainstream. I mean, they're already starting to develop some. It's already out there. It's been out there for a while. But, you know, those monitors are only going to help them create more content. But I still think even though those monitors exist, you're still going to see a lot of stuff just still graded around 1,000 nits. Just because people like that look. Some people don't want it to be too bright and stuff like that. Like, Fallout, I don't think Fallout... Um, is graded very high, to be honest with you. Yeah, the, all all the TVs are great. Like, there's not that many flaws in TVs nowadays. And that's why we nitpick, because it's like, that's the only way to separate them. It's fun to do. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that there was a couple of scenes that just separate. And I've shown you that. All right, we are going to. Got something from earlier that I filmed. Where is it? Are you ready for game mode? Let's do it. Game mode coming up. All right. Let me throw on a game. 
we're gonna go to some uh Elden Ring to start it off. Actually we should start it off by looking at the uh HDR calibration screen, right? Talk about the differences on that. Let's do that. First, let me set them all into their game mode. I don't know why that was on the personalized picture. That's weird. That's weird. Like I said, I didn't set SDR at all. And when you're on the uh, when you're on this screen, it's SDR that they give you. Oh yeah, you can't switch in the game mode like that. I kind of wish you could. You have to go through this and then switch on game mode that way. Game mode by default has contrast enhancer on for the Samsungs. Got to turn that off. It's up to you if you turn it on or not. What the heck's going on with this menu system right now? There it is. I will say this, the S95B uh, compared to the S90D, the menu system, it's night and day, man. The S90D menu system is so much better. So much faster. I'm in game mode for all of them. I gotta go to game mode on Sony. Let me look through chat before we go through this and see if there's any questions in chat. One second. All right. Um, so one thing is when you have to set this as consoles, if I set one console to, sorry, if I set the console to 1500 nits to like do for the G4, for example, some, some of the other TVs might clip highlights. So you gotta be okay with that if I do that. Otherwise, if I go lower, I'm nerfing the G4, so it's really up to you. Update so it's better, so it's much better. I'll update it after we look at gaming, and then I'll look at it one more time. Um, so everything else is up to date except for the S95B. And we will do Nintendo Switch in a little bit. Didn't see any questions in chat. So... Let's uh, set up the HDR. So we want to be in Game Picture Expert. Turn on Basic for now. Make sure I'm in Game Optimizer. This one I think I want. I can't even remember how to set up this. Yeah, I can't remember how to set up the S95B for the game mode anymore. I think I want to turn on game HDR. The HDR tone map. I think I want to turn it on. I'm not sure. Can't remember. So of course for this screen, you do want it at zero. Uh, this I'm gonna set this to 1500. That is what it is. Um, as you can see, the S95B is still tone mapping up to like 2400. That's not right. So we're gonna set it to 1500 just so the G4 doesn't look under 
um, underperforming. Everything else is just going to clip highlights. It's going to have to be what it is, I guess. Um, yeah, everything else looks good. Like I said, all the other TVs are probably going to clip the highlights. Though S95B didn't look too bad there. S90D definitely clicked the, clipped the highlights. AADL was not really clipping it, so... That's good. All right. Oh, not store. I don't want to buy anything. We'll start it off with Elden Ring. And just to go through the settings to show you. I don't have contrast enhancer on. Color space is normal. That's not good. I guess I'll go to auto. This one. Got to reset this. Contrast enhancer on high. Get that off. Oh, yeah. Since I reset it. We gotta change all this. Auto. Sharpness said zero. I mean, you could do seven sharpness. Ugh, colors at 30. I definitely don't want color at 30. <laughs> um, again, I think I have to look at this game HDR. Make sure that's on again. Okay, that's on. All right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's go to, uh, where, where could I go? I guess this area is fine for now, and then I'll teleport to a different area. Nope. Those things are crazy looking. <laughs> I forgot about those things. Those things can die. Man, sky looks really crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, just to double check, make sure dynamic tone mapping is not on. It looks like it might be on. I have to set it to HDIG. Because we are... Oh, yeah, we are in HDIG. Yeah, this is fantastic. <laughs> color did not look like this on the G3, by the way. Like, you didn't get color like this out the G3 in game mode. You just, You didn't. Look at the sky. It's amazing. Yeah, the colors on the S95B are well, uh, out there for game mode. <laughs> just, just, they're kind of out there. I mean, like, here it is when it is default. They want you to be at 30 color in game mode. Which is fine, I guess. It's just super oversaturated. So let's just keep it at 30 color. Nah, let's go 25 to match the... Because I was clipping color there. So you can see uh, the S90D is actually clipping the highlights in the sky a little bit. How you get it down, uh, the sharpness is at 10 on this. Like I said, I would keep it at like 7 usually, but for the sake of this comparison, 
Like you could take the contrast down and you get your highlights back. But you're losing impact when you're doing that. So just be careful with that. Uh, typically, probably just setting your console to 900 on the S90D is your best bet if you don't want to clip highlights. Yeah, the G4 color is really good for game mode, which, again, the G3 color was not. Color brightness is way better. Because you don't lose it. Where you lost it when you went into game mode last year. I made countless videos on that criticizing LG. Thankfully, they fixed it. Look at the Erd tree. It's very bright on the G4. I guess that's not the Erd tree, is it? <laughs> it's just a tree. I almost fell. That would have been embarrassing. Let's go to a darker place so I can kind of show you uh, how the S90D is sort of lifting the shadows and things. Because of the way that it, the EOTF is lifted. Probably the biggest downside with the Samsung S90D game mode. I mean, that's been kind of a thing for a while. I didn't want to go into the swamp again. I want to go to like a cave. Actually, this is good. This is a nice area. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. You can kind of see... Uh, the flickering is the camera. Don't worry about the flickering. The, the flickering is the camera. So, um, different shutter speed. Let me actually uh, fix that for you because uh, I don't want the camera to be doing that. I just want to show you the details. Let's move the camera actually. Oh, God. It's all my mess. It's all my mess all my mess of consoles over there all right here this is better i want you guys to see this i'm gonna fix the camera so it's not gonna flicker one second get out of that i don't know why it's flicker weird Guess it is what it is on that. Okay, we're still sharp. Um, surprisingly, I didn't have to move the labels. Yeah, I don't know why it's flickering. That's weird. It wasn't flickering before. The exposure was way too high on that one. Sorry. The Burger Burger King dude's shooting lasers at me. You can't tell me these guys don't look like they work at Burger King. Well, not work at Burger King, but you know. There's like the BK dudes almost. You know, from the commercial. You know. Um, I might actually have the shadow detail up on this, huh? No? Okay, I don't. That's good. Yeah, it looks pretty decent now. They look really, they all look really good for gaming. Like, if you're gaming on any of these, you're not sad. That's for sure. Oh, God.
change the, the camera exposure a little bit. Kind of in the shadowy area here. Kind of see what I'm talking about. It's like lifted here. It's not supposed to be that lifted. It looks like it's showing more shadow detail, but it's not supposed to be like that. S90 D is good. There's no doubt about it. But it's not much different than, like, say, the S95B, for example, though. Here you can kind of see, like, uh, the sky might look a little bit more green on the G4. Might look a little bit more blue on the AADL. Looks more blue and purple on the and red. A lot of this is the camera, but you can still see some of this. Like there is um, kind of that to certain uh, sky boxes, you will see a little bit of like that painted look where it's like, oh, there's a little bit of a cast. I would think it's a green cast on the G4. Not as bad as the G3 at all, though, uh, but it is there. It is there. You know, just like it's kind of there on the AADL. It's more bluish. Uh, and the S95B is just like blue dark blue for some reason um yeah i don't know they all look really good you can't go wrong with any of these let's load up a different game I'm going to go back to shutter priority. Oh, God. I didn't mean to do that. It's flickering still. Apologies for the flickering. I don't know why it's doing that. So the S95B has a, a little bit of a lifted EOTF as well. It just looks like, um, you know, it shouldn't be that bright in the shadows. I'm going to keep it on manual exposure and just change it myself so I kind of show you what I mean by a lot of that stuff. I don't know why it's flickering. Beats me. They all look really good for gaming. No surprise though. I mean, Samsung kills it in game mode. So does um, the G4 apparently kills it in game mode now too. Because uh, before it didn't, G3 did not kill it in game mode. And uh, the Sony is great in game mode as well. Sony does have more processing in game mode, it feels like. Because like... I feel more clarity in game mode with the Sony, and that's how it's always been. Like, I pointed that out with the A95L when I had it here, too. It's just... That sticks out. So, it's Sony Sony wins on the processing for, for game mode, because they keep some of it on. They keep some of it on. You guys watched the interview with uh, Rob Brennan that I did. Let's go to a different area. No. Just 
kind of showing you kind of the lifted look of the S90D. You might not even notice it until you get to a dark area and then you'll realize like it kind of looks washed out in a darker area the S90D does. And that's where you kind of get the, the giveaway where the way to fix that you do two things. You could drop the ST2084. You could also drop the shadow detail. And it, it gets it closer. Uh, I just keep it at default right now because that's what it's that's what you're getting. Uh let's try. Before we go SDR, let's go to Gotham Knights. This is a very dark scene. I don't know why it's flickering. <laughs> it's kind of annoying on that one. I'm sorry. You can see the green here again too. And then the blue on the S95B. Here's what happens with the S95B when you take it out of uh, Expert Game HDR. Game Expert HDR, I don't know what. Well, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put dynamic tone mapping on these TVs. Not really a way to do it on the Sony though. So I just put on uh, dynamic tone mapping for the Samsungs. Let me go do it here. That's on on the G4. So this is in dynamic tone mapping. Should probably put that on the screen. Ah. Let me look through chat, see if I see anything. This is where the S90B, or sorry, this is where the S95B, uh, it used to be like so much better with the dynamic tone mapping. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like it looks good outside of game mode. But apparently updates fixed that. Is that what I'm hearing? Some people say updates fix that. I I don't know. Let's go back to this. Um, see what see what that looks like with dynamic tone mapping on. go to uh different game forza real quick oh gonna show you a sports game too with dynamic tone mapping on that's pretty cool
You guys excited for the Sony uh, stuff next week? Should get way more details on the TVs and everything. I mean, if you're Dutch, you already know, but it be, it's going to be nice to finally be able to talk about it and stuff. It's going to be nice. I don't know why I was looking at community notices. I don't even play this game. I mean, it's fun. I, I just don't play it. No, I wanted to do free race. People are like, please drive backwards again. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to. <laughs> Let's go with the Porsche. Let's do like sunrise with the thunder clouds. No, they don't really work, does it? That's random with thunder clouds. Sure. Remember, I have it set to fifteen hundred nits. This uses uh the game calibration. Oh wait, I'm in dynamics. Never mind. Disregard what I said. It's still gonna look very blown out on all probably all the TVs. Good good luck with details in the clouds. Um especially on the S ninety D, it's like goodbye details. The dynamic tone mapping is holding on to the details. So you do got that going for you. But again, remember the console is set uh, above where the S90D it can go. Uh, let me change the camera. Hold on. Don't judge the driving because I'm changing the camera. Hold on. Don't judge. I'm going to restart this. All right, that's, that's a little bit better. I think you can see the details. All right, I'm going to restart that. Rewind. Go back. Even further than that. Further. Further. All right, all right there. Oh, <laughs> no. One second. Um, let me talk to you guys. Let me just talk to you guys for a second, I guess. Uh, while my camera cools down for a second, it hates me. What was my hair is all jacked up. Uh, anyway, uh, with my weird looking hair, um, so this is letting the cool down period for the camera. It's very hot in here and it overheated. It happens, tends to happen, but I'll take this time to answer some questions in chat. Let's see. You guys have any questions? Um, Sony when? Sony is going to be on the 17th. <laughs> it hasn't even been 30 seconds and I'm already off the track. Yep, that, that happens. Sony overheat strikes again? FOMO? You already know, man. It's kind of annoying. Um, get the FX30. Yeah, I might try it. I might try it. I just don't like APSC. A A A APSC. Yeah. Um, at least he is in driving backwards. Yep. Which has three D more three D pop. Um, so the the one on the bottom left, you can see it right now. Um, has the most three D pop. <laughs> you can't see it. But yeah, it, it would be the G4. Um, it's got the most 3D pop. The 3D pop. But it kind of does. Like, it has that depth, right? Like, I understand what people mean when they say that. And it, it does have that depth. 
Uh, let's see if it's ready to get back in the gear. It's still very hot. Okay. Looks like it's cooled down a little bit. I'm a ghost. Look at me. I'm a ghost. It's kind of cool. I'm a, I'll stay on the screen as a ghost, I guess. Um, no, I won't. All right. Uh, let's move that back. Do you want me to go into filmmaker mode? No, sorry. Not filmmaker. Do you want me to go into uh, static here? Oh, God. I'm already off the track. That was bad driving there. I, I can't even front. That was bad. That was bad by me. I should have hit the brakes right there. Um, you know what's crazy though is I don't know if I can get this to come back. Let's go into photo mode real quick. So clouds, where are they? S ninety five B is doing it. You have to drop the contrast with when you have the uh, tone mapping set to active. You have to drop the contrast to like forty before you can start to see clouds. And then, if you really want to see the details in the clouds, you got to go to thirty. Nuts! I will change the console to the thousand and show you again on the thousand, like if you want. But I've done this last stream, so I probably won't do it again. Um, but man, that's annoying. Kind of wish you could just see the clouds, right? I am such a bad driver. I just hit that right when I went back into the game. Um, do you want me to turn dynamic tone mapping off for this game? So you can see um, what the HGIG looks like. Oh boy. What is this game set to hard or something, man? Like, <laughs> I don't remember this game being that hard. I'm just spinning off the track. I need a car upgrade or something. This is bad. This is bad. Oh, God. All right. I'm going to change the mode. Let's see if we can get the... Uh, let's see if we can change the mode on the Samsung. Let's go into photo mode so we don't embarrass ourselves. Holy moly. All right, so let's see if we can get the same. Oh man, you guys can't even see the clouds because I'm covering them. Jeez. Sorry about that. The comment was covering the clouds. I'm trying to show you the clouds. Let's get let's get the clouds back. We need clouds back on the Samsung. Shame. So we're in basic. We get clouds back, but it's not blown out. That's good. So yeah, um, that's good. It's actually showing a pretty good amount of clouds. What contrast are we on? 50. That's good. Great. Let's see if we can keep that. Oh no, we got to go to um, HGIG on this one. So let's go to HGIG on this one. Don't have to do anything on the other ones. I'm just going to keep... Uh, S95B just lost gaming already. So it's like... I'm not even going to mess with it. Um, God. Okay, let's see. Clouds look pretty good on both. The other day, when I set the console to 1500, the Samsung was blowing out the clouds. Not blowing out the clouds today. Pretty interesting. Only did it when it was on dynamic tone mapping. Oh god, I'm off track again. Different game? Yeah, I agree. Um, let's see what else we got. Yeah, the the comment box was making it hard to see, I know. 
I'm gonna put it put it over here, I guess. Cause there's a big space over there. Let's just do that. Gotta hit the brakes. Yeah, I am bad at this game. Alright, uh where are we going here? Oh, I know what we could do. This has good HDR color. It's not on DTM anymore, so turn it off. So there's something really inconsistent about the S90D's game mode because unless there's a phantom update um, that I wasn't aware of getting, the clouds didn't clip this time at 1500 nits. So that's cool. Still says DTM on. I know I fixed it. Sorry about that. I think I'm delayed. Like I think I, I think what I'm saying and reading chat, it's like way too late. That's because I'm doing 4K stream. When you do a 4K stream, you get a little bit of a delay. I guess we go to save versus charter chip. Uh, sloop. Last time I couldn't find a game. Let's see if it does it this time. Yeah, the game mode's on 1430 at the moment. I mean, look, I could update. I could update right now while this is happening. All right, let's go through the UI and look at the UI one more time. Different. See, that's the UI. We still have the one, two, three thing. Let's go to the home screen. All right, well, that's obviously going to be the same. Let's go to the actual home screen. Media instead of home. I don't know. That's what it says there. Okay. All right. Now we're going to update. We'll update live. Live update while it's searching, searching the seas. I'm doing something wrong, right? Like, why is it searching the seas? Is there a reason? Is there a reason? Like, does this game not search? Let's, uh, let's try to do like, the tutorial or adventure mode or something. 1622. You want to update to 1622? Let's do it. <laughs> There's a bunch of people watching this like later on. They're like, don't do it. Don't do it. I can't believe you're updating your S95 beads, the latest firmware. What are you doing? Don't you know it nerfs everything, breaks everything? Your S95 B is going to explode. It might. That looks better. I don't know whatever just happened. Uh, <laughs> looks better. It disappeared. Uh, it's back. It's going again. Nope. What's the best way to get into a game on Sea of Thieves? I haven't played in so long because obviously it's not finding a game. Uh, let's just do the Legend of Monkey Island. Maybe that's what everybody's playing. Everybody's playing that or something. Pixel refresh. No, I don't want to do that right now. Cancel. I'll do it later. So is that part of the update? That must be part of the update. Game mode looks brighter. Let's see what's different about it. Game settings. Remember, after updates, everything is slow. It's just common practice. I'm not even judging it.
My, my screen just went blue. <laughs> my S95 be breaking live on on the air? That'd be hilarious, right? It wouldn't be hilarious. It would actually be horrible. What the heck is going on with the S95B right now? <laughs> you ever seen this blue screen of death? How do I get in into a game and see if thieves these days? <laughs> I think my TV just died. I think my Xbox just died. What what just happened? Oh no, the game just started. I'm just overreacting. S95B confirmed just like died. Oh, I just turned off both of Samsungs with one controller click. Didn't want to do that. Stop trying to pixel refresh me. It's one nit now? What are you talking about? One nit? What kind of buggy software is this? I want to go back to the Xbox. Take me back to the Xbox. Okay. It's a gear button. I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna let it let it warm up. It looks brighter. Yeah, it's gonna be slow for two to three minutes. You're right. I know. I know. I know better than this. I know better than this. I know better than to try to like force my hand on a speed upgrade. No, I don't. I just want to play like the game. It's like a show you stuff on the game. <sighs> High seas? I don't know. Why is it not working? Anybody know? Like, just play. <laughs> just let me play. I just want to play. S95B is not rip. We're good. We came, we came back. It's back. It's actually fine. It found something. We're actually in game now. S95B looking good though. It's probably got contrast enhancer on it, doesn't it? Is it ready to be messed with? Whoa, menu is different looking. Look at the menu. The menu is like zoomed in. Why does it look like that? <laughs> that is a weird menu. So menu is different. Zoomed in for some reason. Ultra zoomed in. Why is it so zoomed in? Where is my settings? Oh, they have the list at it. That's from last year, right? Where they put the settings so that... This is like what the S95C uh, UI was like. Except for not zoomed in like this. Why does it look weird? The font looks weird. Everything looks weird. It does have rounded edges like the... Uh, like this. You see? So it's got like the same rounded edges. Samsung's trying to update everybody's UI. That's kind of cool. It's a little different. Um... Contrast enhancers off. Okay, color tone is standard. That's bad. We don't want that. Uh, color space is auto. Peak brightness is high. I feel like we're not in game mode. Yeah, we are in game mode. Man, game mode looks good on the S95. What is going on right now? Why does it look so good? Because the HDR tone mapping is off, right? So it's is it set to like static? And then is this active? Sorry, is this static? And before we were on active. <clears throat> so we're now like even. Wow. Game mode actually looks pretty good. Pretty good. I'm kind of happy with this. Um, let's make sure our HDR in game is set up good. 
because this uses the game HDR, I think. So we want to be at 1500. Nothing clipping. I don't see any details clipping. That's good. Brightness in the sky looks good. Wow, did I just like fix the S95B? It looks way better now. I'm sorry for not updating before. <laughs> just feel like I did the S95B dirty. This game mode is way better. 1430 sucks compared to this. Everybody update right now. If you have an S95B update. Whoever, like, just plug it in, update. Update's good? Question mark? Like, it's it's matching the G4 right now. And brightness. <laughs> it's funny. There's more details. There's actually more details on the S95B than there is on the S90D right now. In the back right there, you see that blowing out? You can kind of see the details. It's blowing out on the S90D. In order to get that back on the S90D, we got to go into expert settings and pull our contrast back to get it back. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah, so the S90D definitely needs an update. Well, let me try something real quick. Um, in past, you put Game Motion Plus on for Samsungs. That does stuff. That does stuff. Let's see if that does stuff. Um, what is that? Zero and zero. Nah, it doesn't do much. Still need the contrasting. In the past, it did stuff, um, but I don't know if it does stuff now. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually like really surprised by how good the S95B looks. Good job. Good job, Samsung, for updating this. This is awesome. I guess the S95B is going to hold me over for a little bit longer. Man, that's awesome. It's clipping the colors a little bit. It's clipping the highlights a little bit, but the color brightness on that is phenomenal. Noise. S90D looks a little bit brighter here, but it's clipping. That's why it looks brighter. Uh, Sorry. Let's go in here. The EOTF doesn't seem lifted anymore on the S95B. They fixed that. Anybody here know if the... Because, like, look at the uh, EOTF on the S90D. It's lifted, right? But the S95B not? They fixed it? Wow. Um, people like the fireplace. So let's look at the fireplace. There's that. Fixed it. The first updates. They did a lot of things with the S95B. Hide this stream from QA because you will say, look how the S95B blows away all the other TVs. I don't know what the other mode... I didn't check out SDR. Like you said, SDR is broken, right? But like, um, it's interesting. Um, on the C and D models, you can fix tone mapping through active mapping active through HM icon peak settings. Are you talking? Is that like? Is are you talking about uh, getting into like service menu and stuff? They all they all look good. Even the Sony looks pretty good. Sony is probably the dimmest here. 
to be fair. Whoa. Look at that sun. Yeah, color brightness is interesting here. Kind of lose it. It's losing it on the G4. You can see. Good example of color brightness right here. Look at the QD OLEDs. Look at the W OLEDs. <laughs> okay. I thought you meant like QA testers. <laughs> I thought you were like, hey, don't make, don't let them make uh, every TV like the S95B. Look at the clipping in the sun on the S90D. It's sad. God, this game is beautiful. <laughs> this game looks good on every TV. But the color brightness is definitely held on to way more on the QD OLEDs. That's not to say the G4 is bad though. Like, it's good. It's still good. Just like the G3 was good, just not in game mode. My opinion. In my, I know people like the game mode on the G3, but there is a reduction in brightness. Specifically, color brightness. That it really makes a difference. Oh my gosh, almost dead. All right, we got to do some SDR gaming. So let's do some Nintendo Switch before we wrap. The, the S95B thing just blew my mind. So this is going to be like a longer stream, but I don't care. It's fine. Whatever. Um, I'll chop it up and all that stuff. I will put this screen up and I'm going to put up the uh, Wii. Not the Wii, sorry. <laughs> the Switch. Ah. Uh, wow. Look at the white here. I didn't change any settings yet, but let's do that. Uh, we are in game mode. Um, contrast 42, like that's where we should be. 30 color is ridiculous. We don't want that. Um, let's try 25 and reduce it if we need to. Contrast enhancer off. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all good. Um, G4 is an expert. We don't want that. We want game optimizer. Huh. You know, for peak brightness being locked, this is a... Uh, that's pretty impressive. Stopped working. Why do you want to do that? Uh, it's because I didn't press any buttons. That's my bad. 
It thinks it's an Xbox still. All right. Yeah, so all that pixel brightness is at 100. I know it was like 90 last time. People were giving me crap for that, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference, 90 and 100. Um, yep, we already checked it, S95B. All right, do this one. 30 color, nope. 10 sharpness, nope. Contrast enhancer, nope. Standard, nope. Color space, nope. I think that's all good. We're gonna max it out. I already know who's gonna win this fight. I can already tell. <laughs> I could already tell who wins this one. So we gotta go peak luminance high. I usually put on um what do you call it? Where um advanced contrast enhancer, but I'll turn it off to be fair. Where is it? Where is it? Is it gone from game mode? Wow, I knew it was gone on the A95L, but I didn't know it was gone on the A80L. I guess that sucks. Oh well. Um, maybe it's on by default. All right, let's go to Mario. That's a bright game, right? Probably. I'm a duck, yeah. Checking if the software can be played. All right. So, you know, I harp on LG about their SDR brightness being locked. I do, and it shouldn't be locked. That said, despite it being locked and set to off, peak brightness at off is still bright. <laughs> so... You're probably fine with this. And if you want it brighter, we can get it brighter. I'll get it brighter in a second. I'll show you how to do that. Let's stick, let's stick with Mario. I'm playing with these uh, Joy-Cons. I'm not, not a Joy-Con guy, but I can't find my Pro Controller for some reason. Let's go get some more. Why am I an elephant? Looks better with the camera in front of the TVs. All right, one second. I gotta go to shutter priority again then. I'm not even gonna try to uh, balance this. It's just gonna kind of be balanced all the time. Yeah. All right, it's uh, in the middle again. I'm an elephant, Mario's an elephant. What do they do to games? Um, all right, now I'm back, I'm back. I'm, I'm fire Mario now, that's more, more what I'm used to. I 
I think you'd be more than fine with the G4's brightness in SDR, like game mode, but I'll show you how to get it brighter. S95B is uh, bright. The brightest of them all? I'm actually kind of surprised at how bright the A80L is staying. And I actually think the S90D might be the brightest here. Now that I look at it. No, what you guys think? How's it look on the stream? Let's go to the home screen again and look at the white. Let's try this. I'll just run this uh, intro for Fire Emblem. Kind of look through chat. We did HDR already. Hater, you're late. We did HDR for a good 45 minutes and then I updated the S95B. Not many, you can't really buy the S95B anymore. Man, S95B is like so bright still. After the update, that seemed to alleviate a lot of the game mode issues. I was told 1630 was a terrible update. Don't update. Or what? No, sorry. 1622. I was told 1622 was a terrible update. Don't update. And look at what we got. Got the S95B looking good. Is it side angle still? Hold on. There, is that better? It's less side angle now. Gotta redo the two last two hours of the stream now. No, I don't want to. We're gonna wrap it soon. All right, last call for questions. You guys got questions? You name it. S90D default bright. I'm pretty sure I got the uh, S90D maxed out. Yes, I do. Well, let me double check peak brightness. Yep. I'll let the new, I'll get the cutscene play. Alright, this will be a dude, I guess. Um, sure. I don't want to think. Let's just start the game. I want cutscenes. Give me cutscenes. Yeah, you know, that was probably my biggest gripe about LG is I wish they had just, like, unlocked peak brightness. Because I'll show you in a second what you could do peak brightness. Um, so let's just do that. Let this cutscene play. Let's give... Uh, thank thankfully, ALLM is like, hey, we got you. Don't worry. So you could put it in expert bright. If you like vivid, you could put it in vivid. I wouldn't, but... Uh, if you want to, we can. Uh, but we'll keep it in expert bright. Let's see how that does. See how that performs next to the S95B, which seems to be killing it. S90D looks good too, but wow. Um, 
See, now the G4 is probably the brightest after setting it to expert. And the input lag, though, it's not that big of a hit with ALLM, so you can do this. You could absolutely do this. Kind of curious how the Sony's and Samsung's look without peak brightness uh, enabled. Okay, I'll show you. Um, here, let's run that demo again, I guess. Whoa. They always want me to update. At least I can decide not to update. I just wanted to uh, look at the cutscene again. Let's go back to Mario. Oh, wait, actually, what am I doing? Let's go to Zelda. Let's go to Zelda. I don't know why I didn't show you this game in the first place. This is a really good game to show off. Not a huge input lag difference. Um, wow, this is flipping hard. Let's go to the Temple of Time. That's a pretty cool place. So there's that. Right now, uh, I would say the G4 is looking the brightest. But that's only because I'm in uh, Expert. Expert Bright. Let's go back to game mode to be fair. I don't know if that's fair or not, whatever. Um, it still doesn't look bad. Like, before it would look like really dull while you were in game mode. But now you have enough brightness where it's like you're good with this. You're fine with this. Any brighter you might just like not like it. I don't know. Man, I, I just love what the Sony does with this image, though. I just love what the Sony does with this image. It's cool. That's why I think Sony does have the best looking game mode. Like, they just keep processing on some of it. So, um, it just looks good. You know? Wish the G4 did the same thing. S95B is super bright, um, so I'll go ahead and turn the peak brightness off on, since you say, what do the other ones look like with peak brightness off? Let's look, let's look, let's take a look. Oh, was I not on contrast 42 for this? Yes, I was not. It should probably be 38, to be honest with you, because uh, that's when you start to like, but you could do 42. You could do 42, I'll just do 38. Let's just do 38. Because you get more details back. If you don't care about details, uh, then do more than 38. But if you want you want your details, you got to go to 38. Anyway, peak brightness. So, peak brightness off. So you want to see what they look like with peak brightness off.
Remember, the LG has peak brightness off by default. Um, so there's that. And then... Imagine if the, the Samsung shipped with peak brightness off and you couldn't change it. Or the Sony. Imagine if that was the case. Like, if you couldn't peak brightness off, like... You'd be mad. And that's why I, that's why I rant like about LG. I'm like, why are you doing this, LG? But now it's like bright enough where it doesn't matter, but you still gotta complain about it because it can be brighter. And people would want that. I think it's enough. And I can still recommend it for, for SDR gaming. I really can. I think it's good. But Ah, just bumping everything. Oh, it just died again. All right. That's a good time to wrap it up. So, um, let me look through chat, see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions. There's a lot of comments on g4 looking good do the samurai update again all right fine i could do it one more time actually my camera just died so i can't <laughs> i will maybe have to revisit the s95b in the future but uh it's kind of one of those things where you can't buy it no more if you have it you're you're cool um but uh if you don't then uh that's okay. It's okay if you don't have it. Ah, I'm a ghost. Uh, so, yeah. That was the stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Uh, leave a comment if I missed your question at all. Um, share it to people that might be interested in it. Things like that. And subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, because I really do appreciate that. And if you end up buying a TV this year... Remember, I do have affiliate links for all the TVs that we talk about. And that would be really nice if you bought your TV using one of those links. If you're buying a TV anyway. That's all I ask. And um, you guys are awesome as always. Thank you so much. Uh, David E. here for that super chat. He says, thanks for the valuable comparison, brother. I'm glad you found it valuable. I was really hoping that people would find it valuable. Because... I know it's like, why are you comparing it to the S95D and the AADL? It's not fair. It's like, I get that part that it might not seem fair to you, but it's not about being fair. It's about seeing it next to the other TVs and see if there's a leap. Do we have a leap? Is there that much of a difference between the G4 and the AADL? Is there that much of a difference between the G4 and the S95B? So we've done the S90Ds. So I thought it would be fun to include that. But next week, hopefully next week, Fingers crossed next week, um, next Saturday, we will try to do the S95D and the G4 comparison side by side. Just those two. Just those two. If I can't, I will do a video um, and then we'll do a live stream with multiple TVs. And I'm going to get the C4 as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, I have a lot of fun doing these. So... I will keep doing them as long as you guys like them. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Peace.